guys, it's Lucky Mac here. In this video, I'm going to be running through my very basic 12 volt dual battery system that I set up. Now, I felt like it was important to preface this video by saying I'm not an electrician and this was my first exposure to anything to do with wiring or pretty much any electrical setup to be honest. So. A lot of the methods I use in the video might not be perfect and if you are an electrician you're probably going to be cringing your way through it. So with that said, after the setup was done I got it looked at by a proper electrician and we voltage tested everywhere and he gave me the thumbs up. It's also been four months since I set this up and I haven't had any issues with my setup. So while a few of my methods may be a little bit unorthodox, like everything else in this build I've just done it with the things I've got at home. My main hope with documenting this whole build setup is to maybe give people who aren't that experienced or sure if they can do this sort of thing, just a bit of encouragement to say, look, I'm sort of bumbling my way through it as well. And I'm very happy with how it's all turned out. I think, yeah, definitely worth having a go. So obviously with my lack of experience, you can sort of see as I go through it, that in some areas I'm sort of I'm working stuff out as I'm going and I was, I was really confused by each step until I got through it. So the thing that helped me the most was I was watching video after video after video, like, like every single step I took I'd have to watch like four videos just to be sure I was doing the right thing. I was messaging mates who knew more than I did the whole way through and it all worked out in the end. So it's not the most streamlined video ever but I hope that in some ways it's a useful guide if you are setting something up that's similar. I'm also gonna link all of the videos that helped me out to work out the 12 volt process in the description below. So if you're after a more detailed step-by-step -step guide and a bit more of a in-depth explanation as to how it all works from someone who knows what they're talking about, they're definitely something I'd recommend checking out. Now, with all that said, I'm absolutely stoked with how the setups come out. My electronics have done me very well over the trips I've gone on and I really haven't had any issues. And so, as the great Russell Coit would say, let's get cracking. So I'm about to start the electrical setup of the build. And this is by far the area I know least about. So I've gone the safe bet, gone with the um, basic king setup on everything. Just trying to run on the same system, which means there's less chance of me messing it up. I know roughly where I want a few things, but I'm gonna have to step at one thing at a time. So first thing for me is just to remove these shelving and I'm gonna have to work on the panels after the farm where I'm gonna run the wires. But first thing I'm gonna have to do is run just the second battery setup, get that correct. And then I can worry about the inverter and the solar panel, which I've snuck up on the roof. So time to remove the shelf and then I get to set up my battery. This is the exciting part. So basically, clear your shelves first before you try to take them out. All right. All right, it's looking a lot cleaner. Just gonna clear my space and I can start. So looking at the wiring setup for the dual battery, the first thing is to work out where everything's gonna go. Originally, I was thinking of mounting the isolator right onto that panel there. It doesn't make much sense because it's just, there's not gonna be an easy fix there. So what I'm thinking of doing now is, I'm gonna attach this little bit of timber right there onto the shelving that's gonna go back onto it. And then I'll attach the isolator directly onto there, as well as the solar controller. And then I'm just gonna run my wiring back through that spot, because my other battery is sitting just in there. I think that's gonna be the best way to go about it. So I'm gonna run it off of that for now. And if I have to change it later on, I will, but this is how I'm gonna go forward with it as of this point. So the first step here is to disconnect my negative terminal from my starter battery, which I'll do now. So next, my little light setup that was originally connected to my starter battery, just disconnected that. I'm gonna pull it back through that little hole so I can set it up off the second. There's a little hole through here that it's used to get from the front to the back. I'm gonna use that small drilled hole to run my wire through to the front. 
I'm now going to drill a small hole through the plastic here just to hide the wire as it runs through to the front of the battery. So with that done, I'm now going to run my wire through there, poke it up towards the front. So that now gives me something to run the wire straight through. It's now created a passage for a little hidden area which I'm then gonna run through that hole that I've just drilled so I can get it to my starter battery. So with my wire run to the front, I just need to cut it off at the right height for the isolator and then create a new wire to run straight to the battery box. So my wire's gonna go approximately here, no higher than that. So what I'm gonna do is cut it at the highest point and then I can hide a bit more behind there at some point if I need to. I'm gonna go with some better covers, but that's roughly it. So that wire's been crimped. Now I've just gotta put the heat shrink on it to seal it. All right, I think that's pretty much on now. Got my one terminal ready, so I've just gotta create the second one, which I can use to run for the alternator. So I've now crimped and connected the terminal to my isolator. How I'm going to earth it is I've just created a little slit in there and I'm going to use a self-taping screw to attach that on the inside. And then I'm just going to run the second terminal to my second battery and that should be pretty much ready to start up and test. Alright, so this should now be grounded which frees me up to run my second terminal onto here. Alright, so I've now attached the other terminal here. It's roughly where it needs to be for this one so I'm just going to strip back the wire and then attach the other terminal so it's ready to connect up to my second battery. I'm going to crimp this other wire and it should be all ready to connect up. So our other terminal is now on. Alrighty. Now that all my wire's done, we'll just reason up to test it out. So I think I'm going to have to uh, set this battery up and connect up this terminal. Just see if it's going to run. So from the isolator, positive connection to the secondary battery. So there we go. It's positive from the isolator. And my original is not connected up there yet. So I've now got my earth, my second battery. I'm trying to hide it in behind where the battery box is just to keep it a little bit neater. That's gonna connect up directly to this terminal here. So the next stage in this is to connect my main positive wire to my main battery. And then I'll connect the earth on the second and then the earth on the main. And that should be all set up, so after that I'll just quickly test it. All right, so I'm now running the car. My smart isolator is telling me that it's running. And it's clearly charging it, and that all seems to be running well. So I'm confident that that's wired up correct. So I'm just gonna let that sit and run for a little bit, put a little bit of juice into my secondary battery. But all in all, it seems like it's doing the job. So I've now got my little light switch running off my dual battery. So if I flick this on, and see that now, my little light switch up here and turn off. I'm gonna flick that switch. So that lets me know that this is now running off of the second battery and not off my starter one. So with my dual battery system all wired up, the next step's gonna be to remove these panels and work out how I'm gonna run the wire from the inverter to the dual battery. I'm also gonna work out roughly where I want to mount the inverter and I think I'm gonna use the same channel I use here to run my solar panel lead as well. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm gonna to have to pull away all the installation I've already put in the back there, but that's why I've got this pipe here. So I'm hoping I'll be able to sneak through my solar lead up through that cavity a bit easier by running it through that pipe. Looks like I'm just gonna have to start taking out all the stuff I put in and then put it all back in after. It should be fun. 
Nothing better than undoing a bit of work you've already done. I stuffed a fair bit up there, which is now hitting a point where it's going to be tricky to get out. <laughs> now I get the joys of stuffing it back up there in a bit. I'm going to have to pull all this insulation out and start again, so I'll do that off camera. So to run my solar wire, I think the easiest way to do it is going to be to cut off the extension lead just roughly where it needs to go with a bit extra to connect into my solar controller. And then I'll run the end of the lead back down through there to where it needs to connect into the other side. Just a bit easier than worrying about the plugs and stuff. It's because I've got 10 meters, I can afford to cut off a little bit extra and then start working back from the solar panel. So I'm giving it a lot more than it needs just to be on the safe side. That leaves me with my red and black wire, which once I strip back this other bit, will go up into there. So now I've also got this other end free to run down through the roof. And now I bought this little bit of pipe just to act as an easy feed through for this wire, through the panel where it won't be able to be accessed that easy. So this just feeds it nice and easily through the other side and will make my job a lot easier trying to retrieve this wire and not having it skew off into anywhere weird. Now I'm going to connect up the solar panel and then run this back from the roof. I've also bought this rubber grommet that's going to sit nice and tight around this wire. So when I run it through the roof, I'm just going to put a little bit of this thicker flex around the outside and that should keep this as a nice watertight seal um, just to stop any liquid getting in through the roof. So preemptively, I'm going to run it through the end of the wire all the way up so it's nice and close. Then I'll work it back where it needs to sit and fix it in down through the roof. This cost me two bucks. There were other options which are specific caps made for the roof, but because I'm hiding this somewhere a little bit more secure in my roof, I feel like this should be a pretty good option. I'll drill the hole a little bit tighter as well, and this should provide a pretty good seal as far as I know. So for now, I reckon I'm gonna mount my solar panel in between my roof racks. Although I'm playing with the idea of potentially getting a roof cage and mounting at the front. So for that, all I'm gonna do is have a couple loops of the wire extra that I'm gonna hide underneath the panel. Uh, just so if I decide to move it, I've got a bit of extra play in the wire and I won't have to buy a new one and recut it all. So for now it's just a matter of getting it out and I'm going to move the roof rack in a little bit tighter just so I've got a nice something to fix to with the brackets I've got. So I'll pull the panel out now. There she is. So in order to mount the brackets to the panel, I'm going to be using the self-taping screws in the side, and then I'll be using the same self-taping screws up to the roof rack. So my first step is to uh, line this all up where it needs to sit on the panel, and then that should allow me to transfer it over to the roof rack. So slightly below where I need to, just so I don't risk messing up the panel. Seems like I'll be pretty sturdy if I do that everywhere. Worst comes to worst, I'll just start the one in the middle. Alright, so I've got my two brackets on there now. I'll just go to the same to the other side and then she'll be ready to put up on the roof racks. Solar panel is now up and I've run the wire along my roof rack here. Then got a little slot in between here that it's gonna hide it and keep it down. And then I'm gonna run the rest of it along to this point here where I'm gonna drill through and then use this little washer and some silicon to close the join. So all in all that's like it's coming out as a pretty good little setup and once the, I'm just gonna clean this here so I can drill into it. And then other than that, it should be pretty, 
pretty sweet, pretty tidy, and I'll be able to run my wire down the inside of the panel. All right, I'm now just gonna drill through here. I've now got my little button in there, and I'm just gonna silicon up against it hard, try to really make sure none of the water's gonna get in. But now I just gotta run the tubing down through there, and get that wire to the same point, so I can be running the wire for the inverter as well. All right, so up here you can see my wire running down. I've got to run the tubing up through there to give us something to move through, and we should be able to just poke it through. So there's my tube at the top. See my tube there? So now I'm just gonna poke the wire all the way through. There we go. So that's now run my wire through there, up to the front. I'm just gonna run it the whole way through and towards the battery box. We'll come back once that's done. So now I've ran my positive wire that's gonna sit in the inverter through the back and both those are gonna run the battery box. So this part now, I have to create a wire because I'm extending the one that I bought. I'm extending the wire that came with the inverter because I wanted it to run it a bit longer. So first of all, I'm popping that off. Now I gotta crimp this wire on. Then once that's crimped, I'll just have to hit, put the heat shrink on and then it will be all sweet to start putting these panels back on. So I know where I wanna mount my inverter on the other panel. So I just gotta drill the holes in and then I'll install it while it's on the ground. Lift up the panel and get the holes in for my two power cords. That means that panel can go back on, I'm just focus on this, and then take everything down to the battery side. So my inverter's now hooked up on there. I've run my two wires through, and I'll just connect straight up, and I can now work on putting that other panel on and hooking it all up. It's pretty sturdy. This will be good. So I now have all my wiring set up for my dual battery. Uh, it's switched on. Got the fuse running out to the inverter and just the touch of a button. I've got all of my household accessories there will be run. I've now got all my lighting hooked up to the second battery as well. And solar should be sweet. I just gotta wait till there's a bit of sun to really test it. Yeah, so far I'm calling this a success. And as long as it doesn't blow up overnight, looks like I'm pretty good to go. Just gonna get the shelving back in so I can mount my plate, but for now, this is my very basic dual battery setup. Alrighty, you legends. Thanks for watching. I hope that this was helpful to someone. Now, if you have any questions, anything you'd like me to clarify, follow up on, you want to tell me you hate me, that my setup's terrible, feel free to leave a comment. I appreciate every comment that I get and I reply to all of them. And if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. Oh, and if you hated the video, also give me a thumbs up. That is the best way to show me that you disapprove of what I'm doing. That it, I, I get the message loud and clear. Feel free to subscribe to follow along with the rest of my van build and I hope you're all having a lovely day. Till next time.